What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another YouTube video. I wanted to make a final video on all of the hardware wallets that I have reviewed on my channel with the exception of this iPod, this USB stick, and this SATS card. I do still have to make a dedicated video on this SATS card and kind of show you guys what I think the best device for you to get going into 2024 will be. Uh, there's been a lot of news lately on Ledger, which I want to talk about. And I think this is a perfect time to make content like this because it's the holiday season and a lot of these uh, hardware wallet companies are running a holiday sale. Uh, it might be either their Black Friday sale or they're just having a Christmas sale. On top of that, I do have a referral link and code for almost all these devices. So you guys can pick them up at even a further discount and all of the links will be in the description for those. So one thing I did want to say before I got into this video is I've actually had crypto on every single one of these devices, minus the iPod and the USB, and I have not had any of the crypto actually compromise. I've not lost any of it, which is good because I think that's a huge security test to do when I'm making these videos is to make sure that if I had crypto on these, that they weren't compromised, that none of these companies are trying to scam people out of their money. And it seems like that is the case. So I don't want to mention the prices on these devices because they are constantly changing with sales. So I will have the relevant information in the description below for the prices that they are at as of the recording of the video. Always click the links and check to make sure because like I said, there's always going to be discounts. But first I wanted to touch on the three card wallets. And these are the same shape as a credit card. You can store them in your wallet they're also very sleek and you can kind of hide them anywhere if you really needed to. The purpose for using these types of wallets is people don't generally see something like this and think, oh, it's a Harbor wallet versus when you see a ledger, you pretty much know what's on here. I like the Tangem the most because it is very sleek. They give you a pack of three if you choose to have them and it uses the NFC chip on your phone so you can actually use their app and their app supports, I believe, if not hundreds, thousands of cryptocurrencies, and they're constantly adding more. So I just made a video on this one, and I will have the link in the description, like I said, for all of these. For the Cool Wallet Pro, it's interesting because you actually need to charge this device, and it only supports Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and XRP. XRP not really being that popular anymore, and moving into the future, I think a lot of people want to hold more than just four cryptos, but if you just want to hold one of the four cryptos, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, or XRP, this is a good purchase. You do have to charge it, and the charger kind of slides onto this, and it uses a micro USB, which is another kind of disappointment. Finally, there's the SATS card, which I haven't reviewed a dedicated video on, like I said, but it's pretty cool. And you can actually get these pretty heavily customized, kind of like a normal credit card to put anything on here. You can get your brand name. So if you have a company, a crypto company, you can actually hand these out to people with your company logo on them. And they have these dedicated uh, deposit uh, addresses and it pretty much only takes Bitcoin. Next we have the Grid Plus, which is an interesting wallet. Um, I've actually had this for a couple of months and I've had some issues with this device in particular. I reached out to support on Twitter and they told me to reach out to them to get a replacement, but you can see this screen, it's constantly popping off. I don't know why, but this sits on your desk really well. It sits like, I'll try to angle it for the screen. This is kind of how it sits like on my desk. Obviously this is how it actually sits, but it comes with a standard port right there, a DC in, and it has an ethernet cable. And when I first got this, I really thought it was for kiosk payments. Like it kind of reminded me of a credit card machine. You slide in your card, and that's how it worked. But this is not the case. This is actually a crypto hardware wallet and it uses cards that plug in here and the cards are what hold your assets. So it's really neat. You plug this in, there's a passcode for it. There's also a passcode for the administrator settings. So theoretically you could have a bunch of friends that have the cards and they just come in here to use this device to access their funds. And you also have the back end which you can control. Now I set the passcode the same for both because this was just a device I wanted to use for presentation. I haven't actually had the chance to use this device mostly because of the lack of support for other crypto assets. So if these out of the way, I'm gonna get on to talking about the hardware wallets that you probably didn't expect to see in this video, which would just be a USB flash drive and an iPod. Now, 
I wouldn't recommend really using an iPod unless you've modified it like I have. I put a micro SD card in here so it has some sort of hard storage versus a spinning disc, which could cause damage. And you can pretty much compare this and the USB hand in hand, which they're in my hands. Now, there are a lot of dedicated videos on YouTube talking about how to actually store your seed phrases on encrypted flash drives, and you can even put them on an iPod. So I won't get into all of that information, but just wanted to let you guys know that you can, in fact, store your information on here. I'm going to put these aside, and now we're going to talk about the real Harbor Watts, the actual physical devices, that this is kind of what you expect to see with a Harbor Watt. And there's a lot to look at here, so I'm going to briefly talk about each one of them and their features, and then I will kind of make a final comparison and show you guys which ones I think the best are. So first we're going to start off with this SecuX, and I don't know if I've ever pronounced this right, but it's got an interesting shape. It's got USB-C, which is a plus in 2023. And when you turn it on, there's one button right here and it's got a little screen. It's a touch screen. I think it's an interesting shape. It's definitely not what you expect to see out of a hardware wallet. So when you unlock it, it has the cryptocurrencies that you added to the actual device here and you can see there's got some punctuation errors here like it's bnb all in lowercase xrp all in lowercase if you really want to be a stickler about that like tron is in uppercase and i've had 20 tron in here for a long time but you can click on each device and it gives you the receiving address just like that so i can send right to this click on ethereum and it gives me an ethereum address so it's pretty neat uh, it's got a battery in it and it has some other options about it like you can change the name of it You can activate Bluetooth and connect it to your phone or your computer Whatever you need to do in order to actually access your funds. It's definitely an interesting shape and I mean it's pretty clunky It's it's kind of I mean it's the size of my hand if you want to compare it with the Trezor. It is definitely large Next I want to talk about the Descent wallet which actually uses the thumb fingerprint to access the device. I'm going to click account and click OK, which is on the right. And it says, please add an account in the app. So it looks like some of my information didn't save. Uh, not a big deal. The battery is low. It probably also needs to be charged. I actually haven't used this device at all. And I wasn't really a big fan of the device, mostly because of this micro USB. A viewer also commented, what if you lose your thumb? And I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, that's actually a good point. You can't access this device if you don't have a fingerprint. So natural disasters happen if you have one of these devices and God forbid something happens to you and you lose your limb that you use to scan into this device, you kind of can't use it anymore. But it doesn't have support for a lot of cryptocurrencies as far as I'm aware of. Uh, it doesn't have some of the main ones that are being added and the popular ones that are continuing to grow in the space. And next I want to talk about KeepKey. KeepKey is an interesting wallet. The device itself only has one button and it charges with micro USB, which is unfortunate. Like I said, with the other ones, you kind of want a device that has USB-C going into 2024. I think it's a really important thing that they do actually have that, but this device actually has a really good dashboard. And I was pleasantly surprised when I used it on my computer. The dashboard allows you to access a bunch of different cryptos and you can use many different EVMs such as Polygon, Ethereum, Avalanche, and you can actually have all the coins from those chains on this device as well. I thought that was really cool and it's definitely a different take and they really put a lot of time into developing their interface on the computer. So the rest of the devices here, minus the iPod and the USB, are all USB-C. The biggest one being Keystone, which I actually like a lot, but I really haven't used it that much because it doesn't have as much support as the Trezor or the Ledger has in terms of what crypto is supported. So the Keystone is a pretty cool device. It's got a camera here so it can scan QR codes. It's got a fingerprint sensor as well, but on top of that, it also has a pin that you can enter just in case something were to happen. With this one, you don't really have that fail safe. It also has a slot for a micro SD if you want to have more storage, and it pretty much runs an Android based system. So I can enter in my code real quick. And with my code entering, you can see I have a bunch of different cryptos on here. It's got a nice OLED display. And one of my favorite features is that this is completely air gapped. You'll never have to connect this to an actual computer or phone or anything with Bluetooth capabilities. There's no need for it. And a big thing that they do to make sure that you never plug this into your computer so no one can hack into the device is when I remove this rechargeable battery, which is a really nice feature that they have, 
you actually have the charging port up top with USB-C. And this is so that you don't have the device working while it is plugged in to the computer. I really like that feature. They also came with two different backs. So they also gave me a back that has a slot for batteries instead of using this rechargeable one, just in case this ever fails, or if you just wanna use batteries, you can. And I think that's a really nice feature that they actually added. Moving on to the final three, I wanna talk about the Trezor, which is my favorite device that I've used and it holds most of my crypto. And I like it a lot because it allows you to connect to MetaMask and use all of your MetaMask addresses on here like you would a traditional MetaMask. And I really like that feature. You can do the same thing with Ledger. And I really like that feature about both of them. On top of that, I also have the Trezor Suite, which allows you to have, I believe, like 10 or 12 different cryptos. You got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Dash, Litecoin, and a few others. So it's really awesome. I've never had any issues with this device. It has an expansion slot for a micro SD slot, which I honestly never knew until I'm making this video. I just noticed that was there and it uses USB-C. There's no battery in this. You have to actually plug this into your computer and the passcode screen changes every time. The numbers will always change. So you never enter the same code twice in the same order. Setting the Trezor aside, next is the Blockstream Jade. This device is very awesome. I actually have a token, which I will give away for Christmas for someone to get a Blockstream Jade for free. So stay tuned for the live stream with that. But this device has a couple buttons on it. It's got a battery built in and this particular color is green, which is kind of translucent, which is awesome. So you turn it on, it's got one button, two buttons, and this scroll wheel and you can unlock it and view all of your crypto on here. This only holds Bitcoin and that's pretty much it. So if you have Bitcoin, I would recommend getting a device like this if you only wanna hold your Bitcoin on it. It's really cool, it's got a camera on it. And this one aims to be air gapped as well, but obviously you can plug it into your computer. So there is that kind of threat there if you're really worried and you have millions of crypto on it. But setting this one aside, finally, I wanna talk about kind of a lot of people's not favorite right now, which is Ledger. And they actually just had a security breach a couple days ago in which someone uploaded malicious software and they actually were able to drain some users' funds. Another thing that they have is a ability to send your secret phrase into Ledger and they'll hold on to it. It's a paid service and when they released this, it made a lot of people skeptical of this device. In fact, when they released that update to their Ledgers, a lot of people bought Blockstream Jades, and I know that because my referral sales for this device went through the roof almost immediately after that news was announced. So a lot of people were not happy with the way Ledger uh, is doing that because a secret phrase is supposed to be something kept private away from everybody, and no one's ever really supposed to know that. It's supposed to be locked away in a very dark and secure place. But they announced that and then they also had this security breach and it's kind of putting the nail in the coffin for Ledger. Now, I still really do like this device and I've always wanted one. My dad had one in 2017 and when I had the opportunity to buy one because I kind of realized that I did like the Trezor, but the Ledger also supported some assets that this one didn't. And that's kind of the trade-off you have with all of these devices is one of them might support the one cryptocurrency that you need versus the other. And the Ledger in particular supports Solana, it connects to the Phantom Wallet, and I'm able to use this for my Helium tokens as well as my Hive Mapper tokens, which I think is a big plus. You can actually connect it the same way you would with MetaMask, and this one also works for MetaMask, where you can connect a hardware wallet, it gives you its own address where you can send crypto to. So that's pretty much the main reason I have this device. And on top of that, I did get this really cool device sent out to me from Black Seed Inc, which is actually called the Alex, in which the ledger actually slides in here. It's got a top that you can screw on, and this is made of titanium, and it's supposed to protect your device. This is the only device that has an accessory like this. I have not seen any other device like that. So I know this is probably the point you guys were all waiting for was which devices do I recommend and which devices do I use? And that's kind of where I wanted to wrap it up. And a lot of these devices, the shortfalls that I've had with them is the lack of support for other crypto assets. 
Like I said, the Ledger was the only one that I was able to find that works with the Phantom Wallet and allows me to hold my Solana assets. But the first wallet I actually did purchase was the Trezor, and it was from the BlockFi downfall and everyone going out of business, uh, FTX and whatnot. I wanted to make sure my crypto was safe, so I bought this because I compared the Trezor and the Ledger, and this seemed like the best option as far as how many assets were supported, as well as it had the support for the MetaMask, but the Ledger also has those features. Out of all the ones that I have reviewed, I would say that the Trezor, the Ledger, the Blockstream, and the Tangem are my four favorite, and I use them often because of the support for all of the other assets. Since Jade really only has support for Bitcoin, it is going to turn a lot of people away, but I really like the build of this thing and Blockstream itself. This company is a really large company in this space, but I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. Like I said in the beginning, if you guys are interested in any one of these devices, I'm going to have a link in the description so you guys can pick them up, hopefully at a discount, as well as maybe some of them are running some holiday specials so stay on the lookout for them and if you guys have any questions about these devices please put them in the comment section below or feel free to join my discord server where we can talk more about them i'm happy to talk about any of these devices and as well as if you're interested in looking at an individual video i do have one for each of these devices that you can also check out and i have a playlist for them which i'll have linked up right here but that's going to do it for this video hope you guys have a great one i'll see you all in the next one peace out